there are many, many iconic structures around the world, this happens to be Machu Picchu, that have been credited to local folk, like, you know, this was built by the Incas. Uh, I don't think so. If you look at it from a distance, it looks like a bunch of washboards, terraces, all over the place. There's a river, the Urumbaba River, which is filled with placer gold that goes around this peak at the spring runoff. Nature strips the Peruvian uh, veins of gold, and it goes into this river. And I said to myself, you know, why would they take gold out of the river when they've been digging it out of the ground? Well, it dawned on me that, A, after the flood, the mines were destroyed. They were filled with mud. They couldn't do what they did and what we do today is dig down, take the ore, process the ore, send it over. So the easiest way, I su suspect, to collect gold is to take it out of the river water. Well, how do you do that? Well, I call it washboard gold mining. It's a, if you have a sluice and you have a washboard and you send the slurry down there, gold is 19 times heavier than water. It drops into those slots. Well, this looked like a uh, washboard situation where they were pumping the placer water out of the river and letting it come over these surfaces and collecting gold <coughs> without mining it. It's an easy way to do it. But I said to myself, how do they collect it off the surfaces? You know, when it got there, you had to pick it up somehow. Well, this year, in my new book, Mysteries of the Alien Technology, I've discovered something which answers that question. I'll explain it to you in a minute. So, I discovered another similar situation. It looks like Machu Picchu. It's in Yemen. And there's a bridge there called the Bridge of Sides. And what's interesting about this bridge, folks, is that it's 300 feet above a canyon, and it's suspended with rocks, stones put together, precisely cut with no masonry. And it's anchored into this wall on both sides. See this anchor here? where you put the forces. Over here at Olintaba, we have an example of cuts out of andesite stone that are so perfectly cut, nobody's figured out how the heck anybody could machine andesite and get this cut out. But if you could cut like that, you cut this here, and you had a way of stacking these stones without mortar, you're a pretty fantastic architect out of stone. To me, that's amazing. Now, this bridge leads from here over to here, and this is where the terraces are. In order to get the gold, you had to have some way to get across this 300-foot deep canyon. And I said to myself, well, the local folks didn't build this bridge. Some special, talented, advanced civilization to me brought that into being. So I've done a depiction here, what, what I've taken only in Tabo, in Peru, and the Greek amphitheater in Sicily, and I laid down strips of gold uh, material to show you what, what the water came down over these terraces. This is be the collection area. This is where you collect it. And I indicated that by these samples of gold. But still, I said to myself, how'd they get the gold? I mean, it's there. You can't just pick it up. You've got to have some kind of collection material to do that. And what happened was I wrote a new book, Mysteries of Ancient and Aliens. Down here in the corner, I put on the cover this famous statue. It's in Sochi, Russia. It's Medina from the legend, the Greek legend of Jason and the Golden Fleece. You remember? Anybody hear about Jason and the Golden Fleece? Well, what the hell with the Golden Fleece? It shows up here, she's holding in her hand a sheepskin filled with gold. Bingo, light bulb goes off. She says, put this in the water. Sheepskin has natural lanolin on the fibers. And as the placer water rolls over, it collects on the sheepskin. And you've got gold. Now, that would require millions of sheepskins. <laughs> if you're going to cover all these surfaces, I said, OK, where the hell did they get all this sheep from? So I went a little further. And uh, I found this statue that the Jason and I found out that placer gold mining using sheepskins, pelts, is a historical fact. People in this region of the world, that's uh, the Black Sea, uh, water comes out of the uh, Caucasus and goes by 
these objects and it's collected by people who put sheepskin in water. They actually were collecting mining gold. They said, where'd they get that idea from? Huh. Maybe they saw somebody else doing that, right? So I said, if that was a theory, my washboard gold mining theory I launched in the third book called The Anunnaki Were Here. Yeah, you may have read that, but if not, it's available on my table up there. I said, there are places around the world where this would work. And one of them that I put in that book, which I thought was quite interesting, was the Great Pyramid at Giza. Everybody's tried to figure out what's going on inside that fantastic complex. And I'll tell you about it a little later how that would work. <clears throat> but let's get back to the pelts. How are we going to get uh, all the pelts necessary? Well, today, <clears throat> modern sheep pens are, kind of look like this. They have a perimeter. And the perimeter is electrified. In other words, they keep predators out of this area where the sheep are being raised, sheared, and lambs are being produced. And they, have this very elaborate system for raising sheep. There's a mystery in Africa. Michael Tillinger has discovered stone circles, hundreds of thousands of stone circles. I went to Google and I put in the word which I read in Sitchin's translation of one of Enki's stories that he was the master of sheep folds. Down at the bottom of this slide we see the word sheep folds. A sheep fold, according to Google, is a circular stone wall in which you raise sheep. Well, I not only found these circles in Africa, I also found them in Syria, in the Golan Heights. And I also found them in Peru. This is the famous uh, Peruvian stone structure, which is filled with circles and go out just the same as they do in Africa. So it dawned on me that they must have been raising hundreds of thousands of sheep. And by the way, as I examined the wall here, this Peruvian wall, stone wall, the circle up here, has got this fine design. You see this design, these little stones that go around the top of the wall? Guess what? At the Zimbabwe, Africa wall, got the same design. So I said to myself, well, I'm an engineer. It must have been the same architect, right? I mean, the guy signs his wall with this fancy design. But why would in Africa and Peru we would find this similar wall? And they raise uh, in Peru what they call alpacas. An alpaca is just like a sheep. So, bingo, the light bulb goes off. If there's millions of these stone circles, hundreds of thousands, and they're raising millions of sheep, what are they doing with them? Well, maybe they're taking the pelts and they're putting them on all their structures so they can put the water over and collect the gold. So I'm challenging the scientific community to prove my A, washboard gold mining theory, which we'll go into a little bit more later, wrong, and B, that the collection system was sheep, which were raised in all these circles. Now, there's another interesting thing about the circles. Remember that the modern day perimeter had to keep predators out with electricity, electrical fence. Well, guess what? In Africa, Michael Tillinger has discovered that the stones resonate. They have a frequency. And he's trying to figure out what the frequency was. I think the frequency was to keep the animals out, keep the predators out. In other words, they built into the stone walls some kind of stone to vibrate and create a frequency to animals that are predators, natural predators, because they don't have shepherds out these sheep. Uh, folds are out there all by themselves, and they can't be tended. You couldn't protect all those sheep from predators unless you built some kind of a protective wall. So I'm saying it's possible that these frequency stones were a barrier to predators. I now believe the African, the Syrian, and Peruvian walls were sheep folds. Let them prove me I'm wrong on that one, too. Okay? This is just stuff that you know comes to a mechanical engineer. <laughs>